there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today for Inktober, I have a Halloween-themed sketch. It's a witch by request, and I thought I would put the drawing in here as well. So I'm starting off with a horizontal, horizontal kind of slightly diagonal horizontal line that's going to represent the broomstick, and I will draw a darker in just a second. I'm keeping them real light as I put my guidelines in. And basically what I'm doing is putting um, some lines above the broomstick, area to divide the top half of my page into four sections and the bottom half of my page into three sections. So I'm going to have the, the hips above on the top and the knees below on the bottom and that just helps me kind of divide everything up. So um, the the proportions that I'm using is a nine head high person. So the first mark is for the head and then um, the neck is on the second line, meets up with the shoulders still on that in that second chunk of space. Then the waist is on the third line. That's also the line for the elbows. And then the hips are on the fourth line. And so here I am just uh, very gently putting in these marks so that I won't have a lot to erase. I put some circles in for the shoulders and, so, and an oval in for one of my elbows. I didn't have it quite right. I'm using the waist as a guideline to get my elbow marks in. You can see right there. And I'm putting a little oval for the wrist. And I want the wrist to um, be just above the broomstick so she, her hand can reach down and grab the broomstick. And now I'm just playing connect the dots here uh, as I connect the shoulder to the elbow to the wrist. And uh, just slightly bend the line so that my person looks three dimensional. I have a little more information on uh, this kind of um, proportioning on the um, uh, the kind of California girl that I did the other day in case you want to check that out and I'll also link up a book that I find very helpful for doing these uh, these figure sketches and I'm just kind of refining the arm a little bit uh, she had some he-man biceps there for a second so I thought I'd fix that and I'm just kind of very loosely putting in the hands and uh, and the broom there. I want to have a lot of expressiveness in this in this portrait, so um, I'm getting a nice big old crinkly witch hat, kind of like the Sorting Hat on Harry Potter. I really like how crinkly that was, so I thought that would be kind of cute. And now I am just kind of defining the um, face a little bit. I uh, kind of got a three quarter view. I'm just kind of you know just I like to put the indication of like the nose, the lips, the cheekbones, and the eyes right off the bat to make sure everything's lined up. Now I'm going to give her a V neckline because I want to be able to do a pretty ruffle detail on the neckline so I'm getting that in and um, I'm going to go down and work on the legs. I put little ovals in for the ankle and now I'm connecting the knee to the ankle ovals with a kind of curvy line. The, the legs look a little bizarre um, so I got to work at that a little bit to make them smooth though. I like curvy legs but I don't want them to look weird. You know I don't like just stick straight legs. I want to have some curves there but uh, you know, that's how I'm practicing. One of my one of my Inktober goals is to sketch more accurately, quicker, and also improve my figure drawing. Um, and I'm just I'm just kind of finessing that line there. And she's going to be wearing a long black dress. Here I'm putting a wiggly line along the neckline, and that's going to turn into ruffles in a little bit. And I am adding the uh, lines for the hem of the dress. I want it to have a lot of movement, like it's blowing in the wind. And uh, I was kind of thinking that the arm was too long there, like I had it stretched out too far, it would really be a little closer to her body, so I am changing that now. Um, so there's an old saying, and it's, uh, fail, if you're gonna, if you're gonna fail, fail fast, right? So I try to fix all these little failures in the pencil stage so that when I go to ink, I know that my lines are true. So, you know, don't worry about failing, just fail fast and move on. And um, now I'm just kind of fleshing out the legs. I really want it to look like she's sitting and planted on that um, broomstick kind of sitting side saddle there. So I want to make sure that the legs are, you're, you're going to be wider across your hips when you're sitting. So I kind of wanted to have that little bit of a hip spread there. So, um, so it would look like she had a little bit more um, solidness to her. So I was pretty happy with the way that uh, pencil drawing was. So now I'm going in with a pen and I'm still not going to speed it up too much because I want you to be able to see what I'm doing. I'm going in with some just details on the face, nothing uh, too fancy, just to, so I can you know, kind of see what I'm doing. And I'm putting in some wispy hair. Now I almost think that I like just the ink uh, drawing better than coloring, but um, 
you know, you can do what you want to do. So now after tracing the V-neck and my wiggly lines, I'm, I'm drawing little lines from the wiggles, from like the raised points of the wiggles to the V-neck and that's giving me a ruffle look. So if anybody's interested, I could do a little video on how to do ruffles and how to do things like that. If, um, if anybody wants, just let me know in the comments below. And I'm just basically outlining all of the different, um, you know, things I did in pencil with my pen and just putting in any sort of details that I think might help give a little more shape to the body. Like I put some princess seams in on her torso and I just put a little kind of crease where the fabric would fold where you're where you're bending at the hips there. And for the sleeves, I wanted to do kind of a fancy sleeve. So I'm making the sleeves fuller at the uh, wrist and then I'm pulling them in with a tight little band at the wrist. So I've kind of done a little blouson sleeve there. Um, so it's very blousy and, and uh, kind of billowy. I thought that was kind of a nice ladylike detail to have on this witch, kind of like a, you know, so you know she's a good witch. She's a very fashionable, classy witch <laughs> with her, her fancy witch dress. I don't know, uh, but I, I thought it was a fun detail. And sometimes I'll skip around, like if I'm not sure what I want to do, like if I'm not sure if my hand is quite right, well, I'll, I'll go and do the hat for a bit. So uh, I skip around a little bit depending on if I'm not sure I've got something right or not. I find when I sketch something and then look at the next day, I have a much better idea if it's right or not. So if I'm trying to do something at all in one go, it helps if I work on a different part of the um, of the picture so I don't uh, mess up. Now here I'm looking at my very own hands and trying to figure out how her hand should go. So um, I really should keep a mirror on my table when I'm doing this so I can like kind of see how my hands would look and kind of twist them around in different angles and and uh, use that as a reference because um, you know, there's nothing, there's nothing better than drawing from somebody in real life, but you know, we don't always have that opportunity. And I'm just inking the, um, the broom and I thought, oh, it'd be nice to have kind of like a little trail of sparkles or something uh, coming out from the broom, maybe a moon in the background. So I'm just kind of doodling here and uh, you know, I'm just kind of making it up as I go along. So now I'm going in and erasing everything, but unfortunately I forgot that I hadn't inked the legs or the boots at this point. So this is me would be me kind of like having a mini panic attack and grabbing my pen so that I could fix it. But then I realized I wanted the boots higher. So I went ahead and just, I didn't even go in with a pencil. I probably should have, but I didn't. I just grabbed my pen because, you know, it was drawn in my mind's eye. So I figured that was good enough. The knees do look a little sketchy. She's got some, she, her, her legs got a little skinny on the, uh, after I penned them in and I would have liked her to have like thicker legs, but, um, but yeah, all in all, it's fine. So there's kind of free handing that in there. And, uh, that's pretty much all you need for the outline. Um, no, you could keep it like this. I probably should have just grabbed my brush pen and, uh, done some shading and quickly spread it out with a wet brush. That would look pretty cool. Um, I thought it would be neat to have some spider webs on the boots. Uh, this is kind of a, just a rough draft sketch because I end up covering up pretty much everything on the boots and I end up redoing it um, in colors. So, uh, but it, it's kind of nice to practice an idea like that, I guess. And I'm just making some little notebook stars and I call them notebook stars because they're the stars that you would sketch on your notebook when you were in like junior high. So, uh, I, but I think it does add a, like a whimsy to it. I, actually, after the picture was done, I thought she looked an awful lot like Sabrina from the Archie comics, who was a witch, um, or even kind of a little bit like uh, Betty, I guess. Was Betty the brunette or was that Veronica? Whichever one the brunette was. I thought she looked a little bit like her when I was done, but uh, but I was I was really happy with the way it turned out. So again, going in, finishing erasing up any of those lines, uh, adding any little details that I felt it needed. But to tell you the truth, uh, because I was going in with such heavy ink afterwards, it really didn't matter that I put any details in because it really swallowed them up. So um, yeah, just you know, save yourself a little time, I guess, if you're gonna do some heavy ink coloring. Um, again, I'm gonna use the mermaid markers today. Uh, because they're on my table and they're just so darn handy and I've got my little palette there so I can mix my colors if I need to. Um, I find it's, it, the colors are so strong that it's helpful to kind of squeeze them out in your palette and, uh, and get them going that way. And I have some of these newer ones that have the sparkle in it. So those do need to be, um, kind of whack them against your hand a little bit, get that ball moving in there that mixes up the mica and then just kind of, uh, waggle it back and forth to get it to mix up. Cause you don't want to go like shaking it vigorously because you could, 
could end up getting a lot of ink coming out of the top and making a mess. So I started off with this uh, mermaid marker thinking that I am going to do the shadows with this and then kind of spread it around or maybe add in some other colors. Um, the thing about uh, a color that has the pearlescence in it, like the mica, is that it's very opaque. So I wasn't counting on that for the shadow layer. I was thinking it was going to be more transparent, but it's actually very high covering and opaque. So any sort of detail lines that I sketched in uh, would be obliterated. I'm going to speed this up a little bit more because it does get a little repetitive. Um, like I mentioned, I'm just going in with that dark uh, pearlescent color and getting in a lot of my shadows. And this is a wet brush and I'm trying to spread the color around a little bit, but I thought Ugh, that gray is just kind of, once you add the water to it, it's just kind of blah. So um, I wanted to get some maybe purpley colored sparkles. So I didn't have any purpley sparkly uh, pens. So I'm mixing the pink and the blue sparkly pens and that way I can come up with a range of of, uh, plums and purples to do her dress in. So as you can see, it, and because those are sparkly too, they're very opaque in any details that I sketched from the princess seams and little ruffles, um, little like creases and stuff don't really show up here. So, you know, you can save yourself the effort if you're doing that and just wait to do your details with maybe a silver gel pen at the end. And I do drag out the gel pens today, which was kind of fun because I never think to grab my colored gel pens. I use the white one, but I always forget about the other ones. So so um, we're going to be using those in a minute. Uh, I really like the brush tips on the mermaid markers, but if you want even greater control or you want to mix colors, uh, you can use any sort of, um, I like to use my acrylic brushes with this personally, just because uh, they are an ink and not a watercolor and they could stain. So um, I'm less um, protective of my acrylic brushes. So that's what I'm using here. This is, um, oh, I think it's like a number six round, but it's a nice pointy round. It came in a smart art box. There you can see how sparkly that is. It's really catching the light. The glitter in there is really pretty. This is one of the new Jane Davenport colors. It's a nice color for flesh because it, well, for Caucasian flesh because it's so pale and rosy. And uh, then I actually used that brush to pick up some brown on my palette to do that little shading that I put under her hair, like on the side of her face. So um, I don't, you can pick up colors with the, the markers and shade with them. Just, I wouldn't go crazy with it. I wouldn't try to mix a whole new color, but to pick up a little color to do some shading is, is definitely fine. Now, um, the skin is still wet, so you gotta be careful when you're trying to paint. This is very much like watercolor. If you're trying to paint two wet areas next to each other, the colors can blend together. And you see that happening in the neck, but I know I have some opaque inks that I can go in and use, so I'm not overly concerned with it. I probably should have dried it with a heat tool and then gone in, but yeah, whatever. And just some squiggly lines for that uh, spray of stardust behind our witch, and I just went over it with a wet brush to blur it, to blur it a bit. I'm using the gold mermaid marker to do the uh, straw part of the broom and the little buckle and also the um, the broom handle and I'm going in with a little bit of brown to tint the broom handle to make it a little bit darker but I figure too much glimmer is not a bad thing especially with a magical creature like a witch. And I did dry the background and I grabbed some spray ink because I figured um, it's ink, right? Inktober, all ink is good, all ink is good. And I just sprayed through this stencil. This is a Stampin' Up stencil, by the way. And I wanted it a little bit thicker on the bottom, so I flipped my stencil over and just printed it, basically. Just pressed the, uh, the ink from my stencil down and dried it all again. And now I'm going in with a black uh, India ink pen. This is a pit pen and this is the brush tip. And I'm using this one because I was like, oh no, I lost so much definition. So I figured if I went in with a brush tip, I would have these nice bold lines that would really stand out. And here I'm putting the shadows in my ruffle there. And I'm just reclaiming some of the lines that I lost when I went in with the ink. Uh, so that's always a good save. Make sure your um, media is dry underneath when you do that though, otherwise you could mess up the tip of your pen. And if you work quick enough, you can grab a, a damp brush and you can spread that India ink around while it's dry. But once the India ink dries, it turns uh, indelible or permanent. And actually, I think it is permanent. I don't think it's going to fade. Um, so there, there's something you can do there. And I'm using a paint over pen because it's opaque to kind of fix any areas where the ink bled into the skin tone because I didn't really wait very long. And I'm doing some highlights with a white paint over pen. Now here's the thing with the paint over pens, especially the white paint over pen, pens and white gel pens. If you work quickly over a freshly dried layer, it's going to sink into the, um, into the, 
ink underneath and it's going to become a pastel shade of whatever you have underneath. So that's kind of nice for getting those mid-range um, highlights, not the bright highlights, but it's going to give you a nice mid-tone mid color. So it does kind of save you a little bit of work. And then went back in with a pen and added some detail to the uh, the broom. And with a silver gel pen, this is actually came in my smart art box. I'm going in and adding some of those details that I lost with the um, uh, with the mermaid markers. So silver works really well. It's nice and opaque, and it really shows up well. And since I was having so much fun with the uh, the silver gel pen, I thought I've got a whole set of gel pens. I'm just going to grab those and play with those. And those are the color it gel pens. Um, they're really nice. I just kind of forgot about them because um, I don't tend to use gel pens, but they're they're a lot of fun and I really should just throw them in my crate of often used mixed media supplies and grab them more often because they're a great way to add a fine line of detail. And it seems like we're always looking for ways to put in really fine detail, but you know, our brushes are too thick or our media is too runny. I mean, geez, gel pen's perfect to do an eyelash or an iris or, you know, glossy lips or whatever. My white gel pen is the Uniball Signo. Um, I didn't like the white gel pen and the color it set quite so much. And honestly, I find that most, most white gel pens are kind of lame except for the Uniball Signo. But if you have a favorite white gel pen and you want to share it below, go right ahead. Um, I like the broad gel impact uh, Signo the best, but there's also one called Angelic, which is really fine if that's what you prefer. And I'm putting another coat on the skin tone to make it a little bit more um, opaque because, it, you know, the first layer isn't really that opaque when you're going over fresh ink. And I'm just also adding a little bit more red to the lips with the gel pen. I think it's nice to have a mix of pens um, to use because some will be slow drying, some will be fast drying, some will be blendable, some will be permanent. And when you have all those different qualities to work from, it can become um, a lot easier to achieve what you want on your paper. And here I'm going in with my nice bright white gel pen and putting in little stars on the hat. Um, you might even be able to see them fade into a pale lilac because they do um, fade out quite a bit as they absorb some of the ink underneath. And um, I am just kind of going in with my black and getting those details in between the uh, buckle, the little hat like cross part on the buckle, and just seeing what other little touches this needs. So here you can see the final picture pretty much. I think I did end up going back in with a white gel pen and accenting the ruffle on her shirt, but uh, that's pretty much it. I want to thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed these Inktober sketches, please give me a thumbs up. And if you're not already, hit that subscribe button and um, you can see a new video almost every day. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.